Welcome to the 2023 Gabelli School of Business Graduate Diploma Ceremony at Fordham University. We extend a special welcome to those joining us virtually. Leading today's academic procession is Dr. Nimara Chidambaran, Associate Professor of Finance and Associate Dean of Research and Faculty Development. He is carrying the Gabelli School of Business Verge. Michelle Cogolo, a member of the class of 2023, is carrying the Gabelli School of Business banner. Next in the procession are candidates for master's and doctoral degrees from the Gabelli School of Business. The school traces its roots to the School of Accountancy, which opened in 1920 in Manhattan's Woolworth Building. Fordham launched its Graduate School of Business Administration in 1969, and in 2015, the university unified its undergraduate, graduate, and executive level programs as the Gabelli School of Business. Candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Professional Studies and Doctor of Philosophy are wearing custom Fordham academic robes. All master's degree candidates are wearing traditional black academic attire. Today, we will celebrate 516 members of the Gabelli School of Business Class of 2023. Fordham degrees will be presented this afternoon to nine military veterans and veteran dependents. Veterans and dependents who are candidates for degrees are wearing a medallion on a yellow ribbon, a symbol of Fordham's gratitude for their service and of the university's ongoing participation in the post-9-11 GI Bill Yellow Ribbon Program. Fordham salutes all U.S. military members, veterans, and their families, especially those who are here with us today.
Next in the procession are members of the faculty of the Gabelli School of Business, the administration of Fordham University, and members of the Fordham Board of Trustees. At the end of the procession are today's distinguished guest and Fordham trustee, Valerie Eirich Rainford, the Dean of the Gabelli School of Business, Dr. Lezon Aksoy, and Fordham University President, Tanya Tetlow. Professor and Associate Dean of Graduate Studies, our Master of Ceremonies for the 2023 Gabelli School of Business Graduate Diploma Ceremony. Good afternoon, everyone. Isn't it a glorious day? Welcome. Good afternoon, President Tetlow, Dean Aksoy, distinguished guests program directors and administrators, degree candidates, your family members and loved ones and friends. I'm Dr. Barbara Porso and it is my distinct pleasure as Associate Dean of the Graduate Studies to welcome you to the 2023 Fordham University Gabelli School of Business Graduate Diploma Ceremony. It is now my honor to introduce Rabbi David Kalb of Jewish Learning Center of New York to deliver the invocation. Will the rest of the audience please stand for the invocation and then continue to remain standing for the national anthem, which will be followed immediately after. Thank you. Lord, source of all wisdom, we ask you to place your strong hand and your outstretched arm upon these students who will be graduating today. Congratulations. They have labored hard in their classes, assignments, readings, exams, and papers, all leading up to this extraordinary day. Holy One, be with them as they go forward 
in their future as you have been with them their entire lives. Let us all support them in all their endeavors. May they feel the pride and admiration of the faculty, administration, staff, their friends, family, and colleagues. Even after this day, when all the speeches, applause, and the fanfare have ended, may they also celebrate, strengthen, and lift up those around them, especially those who are challenged. With their advanced degrees and credentials in hand, may they not only work in fields that will bring them economic prosperity and personal fulfillment, but may they strive to bring peace, freedom, justice, and equality to the world. May their achievements grow and enrich their communities. May they always see that all human beings are created in the image of God and are worth infinite value and should be treated with infinite dignity. As their careers commence, may they conduct their life's work with exceptional integrity, ethics, and morality. We ask you for all these things, Master of the Universe, and we thank you for this day, and let us all say amen. Thank you, Rabbi Kalb. Now, please, uh, if you can, be seated. I would like to call Lerzan Aksoy, Dean of the Gabelli School of Business, and George N. Jean, PhD Chair, to the podium to deliver her remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. I am <laughs> I am so thrilled to be part of today's celebration of the Gabelli School of Business graduate class of 2023. <laughs> I'm honored to welcome President Tanya Tetlow, Provost Dennis Jacobs, our graduation speaker, Fordham University trustee and alumna, Valerie Eric Rainford, and all of you, family, friends, Gabelli School, faculty and staff, Fordham alumni, and most importantly, all of our graduates. Your degree from the Gabelli School of Business signifies that you've mastered an area of critical importance to business. That's no easy task and you should be proud of this wonderful accomplishment. I have no doubt that you will be able to use these skills to help you achieve your dreams. 
Each of you will have remarkable careers and one day lead organizations that benefit society. But it will be more than your technical mastery that makes that happen. It will be your non-quitting spirit, your continuous pursuit of excellence, your ability to see what others can't, and your honesty, loyalty, generosity, and kindness that will distinguish you as a leader worthy of following. Now, I'd like to tell you that you'll be going out into a world where these traits are the norm, but we all know that's not the case. What I can say with certainty is that following this path will make you and your world better. It will make you proud of what you accomplish. It will build and maintain lasting, caring, loving relationships that will sustain you in your darkest moments and celebrate you in your successes. And if you never stop actively pursuing what you know to be your purpose on this planet, I can assure you that you will succeed. The key is to keep moving forward, being open, listening, and making the most of the opportunities that come your way. We would all like God to show us precisely how to achieve our dreams, right? But that isn't how anyone's life works. Instead, it's more akin to headlights on a car in the darkest of nights, not nearly enough light to see all the winds in the road you will face, but still enough light to get you safely to your destination. So, have faith in yourself, trust that you're on the right path, and be confident that you will reach your destination. I'm sure that as you emerge onto the business world, you will stay the course, you will succeed, and I am so grateful for the honor that you'll bring to our school and for the part that you will play in strengthening our alumni community. I wish only great things to each of you. I cannot wait to see what you will do from here, and I am just so proud of you. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Now, onto our ceremony. We are very fortunate to have Fordham University President Tanya Tetlow here with us today. During her first year of president, she has been incredibly supportive of the Gabelli School of Business, its faculty members, and its students. We are deeply appreciative that she could address our students on this very special day and for all that she has done for our school and our university. Please join me in welcoming President Ted Lowe. Congratulations for all the hard work, late nights, and group projects. Congratulations to your families and loved ones for the sacrifices they made for you to be here and to support you. And congratulations to the faculty who have taught you and mentored you, the administrators and staff who have served and supported you. One of the things that I love about working in a university is that we take time at the end of the year to celebrate the sheer achievement of it all. This is a beautiful moment. Graduates, you chose to come to Fordham University, to Gabelli, one of the finest business schools in the world, in New York, the epicenter of the global economy. You also chose a Jesuit school, one steeped in 500 years of tradition of academic excellence, a place that teaches endless curiosity, how to question assumptions, turning every problem on its head, and a place that teaches deep and abiding purpose. Now, for some of you, that Jesuit identity is why you're here. And for others, you might ask a serious question. What does Jesuit mission have to do with business? Let me give you an answer that may surprise you. The Jesuits are among the world's most successful leaders. They aren't soft-hearted teachers who founded the occasional school. They are fiercely ambitious and successful operation, one that has impact beyond measure. There aren't too many complicated multinational organizations that have flourished for 500 years. So how did they do it? 
I want to give you a concrete example, one last lesson before you leave us, of something I hope you will remember and use every day. The Jesuits have a tool they call indifference. It's a strange term because it actually means the opposite. The idea is this, find out what matters to you, what really matters, and cling to that fiercely. But let go of your attachment to everything else, including, and this is really hard, your attachment to the way you've always done things. It's a principle that Jesuits recite often. They ask themselves to identify constantly what is a mere distraction? What will weigh me down and not help? As a company, it's meant the Jesuits have been nimble, willing to pivot. When something didn't work, they were willing to cut it loose. The principle of indifference also has meant that the Jesuits are innovative, building schools out of sheer determination and creativity. Because if you can let go of your attachment to the way you've always done things, you can set your imagination free. And it has meant that Jesuits are fiercely ambitious. We call that magis, because everything sounds better in Latin. More. Once you've identified the core principle, you can fiercely focus on getting it done with courage, with determination. It works brilliantly. In their first few decades in the late 1500s, the Jesuits were founding three colleges a year. By 1700, they had 700 institutions on five continents. They were famous explorers and cartographers, astronomers and mathematicians. There are 35 craters on the moon named after Jesuit scientists. Now that all sounds good, but how do you find the strength to let go of your attachments to what doesn't matter? The important part is to hold on to what does matter. What will you cling to so you can let go of the rest? What will the overriding purpose of your company be, the one that inspires your team to work together? More importantly, what will the overriding purpose of your life be, the one that gives it meaning? You can build things, companies, opportunities. You can direct all of the enormous power of business to making the world better. You can fight for permission to value what cannot be strictly quantified in quarterly returns. No matter what path you choose as a career, you'll find fundamental values at stake in every organization, how people treat each other, the kind of community they create the level of concern for customers and coworkers alike. You'll make decisions every day that determine whether meritocracy exists or whether talent will be squandered, wasted because of bias and ignorance. And you have the opportunity to do work that brings benefit to the world, joy or creativity, utility or productivity. And I hope you will continue to ask that question of yourself. What is my core mission? How will I matter? Because the forces of the economy are powerful tools, and you will have enormous power to make a difference. Graduates, you face a world undergoing an unimaginable rate of change. And the news these last few months about AI has just made that abundantly clear. At the start of a, the Industrial Revolution, there was no memo that went out, this is the start of the Industrial Revolution. But that is literally what we've gone through these last months. Now more than ever, you will need to practice Jesuit indifference, to be nimble, open to the change that is coming at us, whether we like it or not, undistracted by what doesn't matter, because the world is pretty well designed to distract us right now. Most of all, you will need to cling tightly to what does matter, to fight for it with great ambition. I wish you so much luck in the years ahead. I can't wait to see what you do with the tools that we have given you. And I hope that you will forever consider this community your family and Fordham your forever home. Congratulations. Thank you, President Tetlow. Now, I'd like to welcome our very special guest speaker, who is a Fordham alumna 
and a member of Fordham University's Board of Trustees, Valerie Eric Rainford. Ms. Rainford is the youngest child of Southern sharecroppers and believes that everything that occurred in her life was intended to test her will and resilience and to prove that success can be achieved despite the struggle that may precede it. She is the author of Until the Brighter Tomorrow, One Woman's Courageous Climb from the Projects to the Podium. This chronicles her life story, including the obstacles she faced as a young girl living in the projects and the heartbreak of losing both her mother and brother. Despite tremendous hardship, she embraced her generational current of strength, went on to earn her degree in economics at Fordham College Rose Hill in 1986 and proceeded to have a trailblazing career. The first 21 years, she led businesses at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, where she rose to become the youngest person promoted to officer and then the first African-American female to achieve the rank of senior vice president. That was followed by 12 years as a managing director at J.P. Morgan Chase, where she led a range of efforts in the throes of the financial crisis. Her career culminated in leading J.P. Morgan Chase's advancing black leader strategy, where she managed the firm's efforts that resulted in historic gains of a 50% plus increase in black executive leadership in just three years. After 30 years driving change in corporate America, Ms. Rainford founded the consulting firm Ellery Talent Strategies, which specializes in independent equity assessments and of which she serves as CEO. Please join me in welcoming Valerie Eric Rainford. Wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dean Axoy. How exciting it is to be, be here with you all today to celebrate another phenomenal class of Fordham University graduates, the class of 2023. Yes. To the family members gathered here today, including my daughters, Avery and Alyssa, to the faculty and the staff, to my fellow Fordham University Board of Trustees, and to our not so new anymore Fordham University President Tanya Tedlow. Thank you all for being here, but mo most importantly, thank you for all that all of you have done to help get this class of graduates here on your very special day. When I was invited to speak at today's cer ceremony, I eagerly accepted of course, was my response to Dean Oxoy. Why might you ask? Because so much of what is good in my life today started where you all are, right here at Fordham University. This was a pivot point in my life. I met my husband, Tony, my rock of 39 years, in the Rose Hill gym at a Fordham men's basketball game. Yes. And he's watching from Florida. I got my first job working at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York with the help of Fordham's Career Planning and Placement Office. So yes, Dean Axoy, I will be there and I will be honored to speak. Then the Fordham team said to me, that they would like for me to share my story and speak about overcoming obstacles. Well, there is not enough time in the five minutes that they gave me to speak to you all today <laughs> to share the countless struggles that brings me to this moment. But trust me, I have had more than my fair share. To put it in perspective, when writing my memoir that was referenced a bit ago and shopping it to publishing houses, I was told that the story was not believable, that all of that trauma does not happen to a single person in one lifetime. 
Well, it did. Statistics would suggest that I am not supposed to be here standing before you right now. So I decided to use one of my favorite poems to help share just a few snippets of my story to inspire the thoughts and learnings that I have for you today. It is a poem written by Langston Hughes, and it is entitled, Mother to Son. Many of you may recognize its most famous and frequently repeated refrain, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. But the truth is, the poem in its entirety is instructive for pushing through adversity. And the first section of the poem is written as follows. Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpets on the floor bare. That passage speaks to me about growing up right here in the Bronx, not far from where we are today. And in my memoir, I tell stories of a life full of struggles and setbacks. The struggles of moving every year across the Bronx in search of adequate housing meant a new school for me every year. In one of the stories, I, was, I talk about being about 10 years old, sleeping on a cot in the bedroom, and a rat ran across my chest. Or the shift to Catholic High School right up Fordham Road, across town in the attempt to change my environment in which my teenage friends and I were doing drugs and some getting pregnant. Or working five to six hours every day after high school classes to help pay for that Catholic high school education that we could not afford. Things started to look up, though, after my first year of high school. But then one of my two older brothers took his own life in my sophomore year. It rocked our family. I wasn't sure about going to college after that, but my mother insisted. She had only a sixth grade education and she wanted to make sure that I fulfilled mine. I knew I needed to stay close to home, to be close to mom, which is how I ended up at Fordham University. But then in my sophomore year here, my mother took her own life as well. A complete blow to our family, a second one that we never saw coming. I was lost, and not only did the floors have no carpet, the rooms had no floors, they had no walls, and there was barely any air. Langston's next passage resonates with me about that time where he says, but all the time I've been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. I'm here to tell you that I could not see any light no matter where I turned. So I dropped out of Fordham University when my mom died. I had lost my light too. My remaining older brother, Jay, and I, who I think is watching today too, have been fiercely committed to each other since. But my grandmother, she was my source of strength and my lifeline during those dark moments. The first and only time I saw my very strong grandmother cry was when my mother died. My grandmother was a woman who sharecropped in South Carolina to feed six children. I believe that it was she who Langston Hughes had in mind when he penned that poem 100 years ago. That still resonates with me today and I hope resonates with you as well. When the youngest of my grandmother's children was just one year old, grandmother was evicted from her home in South Carolina 
just three days after my grandfather was killed. The landowner put locks on the barn where they kept the farm equipment and asked her to leave. She and her six children because he did not believe that she could sharecrop the land without a man in the house. He didn't know my grandmama. They had nowhere to go. The family split up. The children went to different homes of family members because no one family could take all six of them. But grandma worked. She cooked. She cleaned. She planted trees until she could bring her family back together again. Imagine how that felt. You see, my grandmother was a descendant of enslaved people, not given the privilege of being able to read or write. She learned to write and sign her name in her 60s when I was just a little girl in order to exercise her right to vote, something that she was determined to do. And I sat fixated as a child, listening to the stories of our family struggles. But after mom died, I needed to be in my grandmother's presence. I needed the strength that I knew that my grandmother could give me to close the void of my mother's absence. And I would constantly go down to South Carolina and sit with her on the porch. And we would sit and cry in silence, staring at the fields in front of the porch. And on one particular occasion, Grandma looked ahead into the fields, and she simply said, came out of the silence, and said to me, she forgot. She must have forgotten what I taught her, that the good Lord don't put no one, no, nothing more on you than you can bear. And then she turned, and she looked at me, and she said, so get yourself back in school. That's what your mother would have wanted. You can do it. Now go, and don't you stop. In that moment, my grandmother was teaching me what generations of those before her had been taught. And when I think about it, every time I think about it, I think about Harriet Tubman and what she said to my ancestors, enslaved Africans, that she was leading to freedom. She said, when you hear the dogs, don't stop. Don't stop running. Run until you see a glimmer of light in the window. And Langston Hughes, back to the poem, said to mother or son, he said, so boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on them steps because you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now. So in these words, Grandma gave me the clarity that I needed and that I vowed to never forget. And I came home, and I came back to Fordham University, and I ain't been the same since. I came back. In fact, I stand before you today with a very clear sense of purpose, and it is to make my grandmother and my mother proud. They walk with me everywhere I go. I call them my two angels. One sits on their shoulder, one sits on that, and they sit with me here today. And I promise them to not only get, but create education and opportunity that neither of them was afforded and to be an example to others, an inspiration to others, that you can push through adversity in search of the light for yourself and for others. When I came back, my Fordham family was there for me. They attended my mom's funeral. Um, they were there every step of the way, which is why I'm so committed to Fordham today. I joined the Fed. I spent two decades there, a dozen years at J.P. Morgan. No one would outwork me. No one would be as determined as me, no matter how it got. There were tacks and splinters along the way, and sometimes what felt like lashes on my back. The first woman this, the first woman of color that, the first black woman. It was all very hard. It sounds good on the resume, but trust me, it was hard, and it was never 
what I was after. Somewhere along the way, I realized for reasons that I still cannot explain today that God put me here for this purpose, to experience all of that so that I could be right here in front of you from the projects to the podium to share with you that you can do it too. But for you to do it, for you to push through adversity, there are just three nuggets of many that I hope that I have shared with you that I hope you take away from my story, my mother's story, my grandmother's story, and from Langston's words. Nugget number one, you cannot give up. Life is hard. Work is hard. Adversity is guaranteed. Notice I have not say overcome adversity because I believe you must push through it. It's not something you can go around or avoid. You have to push through it as if you're in a heavy windstorm and you're bracing against the wind. Fight against the wind, even if you don't feel it, even if you can't explain it. Keep going, keep trying, even if the dogs are barking. And it may not make sense, but don't lose faith. It is not whether you will struggle, but how you recover. Nugget two, do what you can from where you sit in the service of others. Don't be ashamed of the story. We all have them. I can't tell you how many times I've shared my story and it released someone to share their own. When we share our story, we help others heal, share the stories, share the lessons, share the opportunities, and also share the riches. Because by helping others, you help yourself. The struggle was meant for you. I said I couldn't explain it, but I understand that it was meant for me. But it wasn't meant just for me. It was meant for me to be able to share with you that you are going to experience struggle. That struggle is your struggle to learn from and then give those lessons to someone else. Everybody has a story. As leaders, commit yourself to understanding the stories of others because too many of today's challenges are because leaders care more about themselves than they care for others. What kind of leader will you be is the question you should be asking yourselves. And finally, my friends, nugget number three, if perhaps um, all, all of them are equally important, but I would say to you that nugget number three is know what you need to restore yourself. You will have moments of being overwhelmed, of wanting to give in, of not seeing any light, of not knowing what's next. My advice to you is to know yourself know whose you are, and know what you need and who you need to keep going, to get to the light, because there is light on the other side of adversity. There's abundance on the other side of adversity. Sit down on the steps, catch your breath, connect with your resources to refuel, get clear, but get back up and keep pushing against the wind. Because if you give up or you don't refuel, you will never know what's waiting on the other side of adversity for you. Langston closes the poem by saying, for I still going, honey, and I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Thank you.
Ah, thank you for that wonderful speech and sharing your inspirational message with our graduates, Valerie. I would now like to call up our first student speaker, Agya Gol, president of the Student Advisory Council and degree candidate for the full-time MBA. My dear class of 2023, how are we doing? Say hell yay! Can we get it louder? Say hell yay! Amazing, thank you. President Tetlow, Dean Exoy, distinguished guests, fellow graduates, and proud family members and friends. Today is an exciting day. As the president of the Gabelli School of Business Graduate Student Advisory Council, I want to give everyone graduating today my heartfelt congratulations. Looking back two years, when the world was stuck by a pandemic, none of us would have imagined to be here together celebrating this momentous occasion. But here we are, resilient and strong, having navigated through unprecedented times and emerging more determined than ever before. As we graduate from Fordham University, we carry with us the values that have shaped us as individuals and as a community. Our experiences here have nurtured a culture that embodies the Jesuit values of cura personalis, care for the whole person. We have been challenged to grow in mind, body, and spirit, and to live a life defined by knowledge, service, and faith. Today, I raise to you all, my friends, an imaginary toast, not merely to celebrate our success today, but also to look back and to acknowledge how far we all have come. We have evolved and grown to understand that success is not just about personal growth. It's about using our education to create a more just and equitable society. One that encourages to work together in harmony to achieve our goals. Not a single one of us here today has achieved success alone. We have been joined together like a beautiful patchwork quilt, with each piece being different, yet sewn together to create a unified and magnificent masterpiece, you all. Today is the day that we thank each other and all of the people who have shown trust in us to do well and to do the right thing. And those who have encouraged us to move forward, even during the very difficult times that we all have endured. Every obstacle that we have faced has taught us a lesson, and I wouldn't have it any other way. If I ask you all to pause and think about just one memory at Fordham, which will last you for a lifetime, I'm sure you would have not one, but many memories that brought you here together to celebrate today. As we prepare to embark on the next phase of our lives, let us remember the foundation we have built at Fordham will serve us well. The Jesuit values of service, excellence, and social justice will continue to guide us, shaping not only our careers, but also our lives. As we move forward, let us continue to cherish the friendship, memories we have made here. Let us aspire to become lifelong learners who seek knowledge and understanding beyond the boundaries of experiences. Let us give thanks to our faculty members, administrators, staff, and who have supported us 
all along this journey, as well as our parents, guardians, mentors, allies, and our loved ones who have provided unwavering love and reassurance. As we go forth into the world, let us embrace the challenge that lie ahead with confidence and courage, knowing that we are prepared to make a difference. Let us use our education to build a world that is more just, more equitable, and more compassionate. Let us all together make our alma mater proud. Thank you. Thank you for those wonderful remarks, Agia. I would now like to call upon our MBA Student Leadership Award recipient, Catherine Boji, to deliver remarks. <laughs> to deliver remarks. Catherine is graduating from our full-time MBA program. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Porso. Good afternoon, everyone especially the class of 2023. <laughs> no one but us knows what this experience has been like. We were the people in the arena, pushing ourselves to succeed despite all the challenges we faced in earning the degree that gathers us here today. Congratulations to us. <laughs> I want to convey to my MBA class of 2023 the faculty and staff members, and to the many friends I have made, my thanks. I am grateful for the lessons learned and the love and trust you showed me by selecting me as the VP of MBA students on the Student Advisory Council. I also want to thank you all for our shared experiences. While the positive effect is sometimes immediately apparent, there are times when we don't reap the benefits until many years have passed. Regardless, we have made an impact on each other and the world around us. Wherever your path leads you next and whatever you choose to do, there will be many who benefit from your knowledge and all that you have experienced during your time at the Gabelli School. I also want to give a big thank you to my family and friends for standing by me, encouraging me, and being there through all of the ups and downs. As I reminisce about what this experience has been like, I was filled with a mix of joy and sadness. Joy because of the wonderful memories we've created together, and sadness because this chapter of our journey has come to an end. While I was voted to be the MBA student who demonstrated leadership and exemplified the Jesuit value of cura personalis, caring for the whole person, it was not one-sided. You have all shown this to me and to each other. When I began my studies at the Gabelli School of Business, I felt a deep desire to get to know each person in my cohort. I love connecting with people and understanding who they are. I felt more pressure to do so knowing that I only had two years to get to know 90 plus individuals. So I got to work. My method, creating and participating in as many opportunities as possible to get to engage with as many people as possible. Through this, I learned the type of leaders my classmates are. Determined, tenacious, intelligent, perceptive, and caring. I also learned that the members of the class of 2023 are the people who see something that could be better or just flat out needs to change and take action to fix it. I learned how loving and kind they are, how they may not know what is bothering someone but will always take action to help. The members of our class right here are going to do some amazing things. Our potential is immense. Let's not forget the power, strength, capabilities, and heart that we possess and how far we can go. We have achieved so much here, and because of each of our unique gifts and personalities, there is so much more ahead of us to achieve. Remember to continue to embrace who you are for there will never be another person like you. We are graduating during uncertain times. 
but we have the opportunity to drive our own success. I take inspiration from Natasha Bedingfield, who sings the song unwritten, release your inhibitions, only you can tell your story, and the rest is still unwritten. The rest is yet to come, and the best is yet to come for us. Once again, congratulations to my class of 2023. We truly earned this. Thank you, Catherine. That was wonderful. I would now like to call up our specialized Master's Student Leadership Award recipient, Lillianne Lang, to deliver remarks. Lillianne is graduating from our MS in Business Analytics program. Please. Thank you, Dean Porso. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished faculty, esteemed guests and fellow graduates, good afternoon. Today, as we gather to celebrate our accomplishments and mark the end of our journey here at Fordham University, I'm honored to stand before you as the recipient of the Specialized Master's Student Leadership Award. As I look out and into this sea of talented, driven, and passionate individuals, I'm reminded of a quote by former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. It is this courage that has allowed us to persevere through many challenges, conquer our fears, and ultimately reach these significant milestones in our lives. Together, we have faced late nights and early mornings fueled by equal parts of determination and caffeine. We debated, discussed, and dissected complex issues, pushing one another to grow both intellectually and personally. And we learned the value of true collaboration, recognizing that the diverse perspectives and experiences we each bring to the table only served to further strengthen our collective wisdom. In our time at Fordham, we have not only gained a wealth of knowledge and skills, but also have developed a deep sense of purpose. We have been encouraged to ask the difficult questions, challenge the status quo, and to use our education as a tool to make the world a better place. As we set out into the world, let us remember the lessons we have learned here and the values that Fordham has instilled in us. Empathy, social responsibility, and a commitment to lifelong learning. We are called to become passionate and ethical leaders, striving to make a positive impact wherever our path may lead. Let us embrace the uncertainty of the future with the same courage and determination that brought us to this very moment. We may encounter setbacks and disappointment, but they will only serve to make us stronger and more resilient. As graduates of Fordham University, we possess the knowledge, the skills, and the moral compass to navigate the complexities of our world. In closing, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our professors, advisors, and the entire Fordham community for the unwavering support and guidance that have shaped our journey. To our families and friends, thank you for believing in us and being our pillars of strength. And to my fellow graduates, congratulations. As we venture forth into the next chapter of our lives, let us remember that we are united not only by our shared experience, but also by the desire to lead lives of purpose and impact. May we continue to forge our own unique path, grounded in courage and guided by the Jesuit values we have learned here at Fordham University. Thank you and God bless.
Thank you, Leanne. It is now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Namara Chidambaran, our Associate Dean for Research and Faculty Development, to the podium. He will recognize several outstanding faculty members. Thank you, Barbara. Each year, we ask graduating MBA and specialized master's students to vote for the faculty members they perceive as having the greatest impact on their learning. Students vote to bestow three awards on faculty members based upon certain criteria. I would like to recognize those faculty members who were awarded as being instrumental in student success by announcing the awards they received. The first award is a Dean's Award for Faculty Excellence, which is given to exceptional adjunct faculty members. This year, we had a tie for the MBA programs. The winners in that category are Adjunct Professor Michael Deemer and Adjunct Professor Ankur Jaluria. For the Specialized Master's Program, the winner is Adjunct Professor Denise Bennett. The second award is the Gladys and Henry Crown Award for Faculty Excellence, which is given to full-time faculty members for exceptional performance and devotion to the school's ideals. This year's winner for the MBA program is Professor Benjamin Cole. And the winner for the specialized master's programs is Professor Peter Johnson. The third faculty award, the Stanley Fuchs Award for Faculty Excellence, is presented in memory of a former area chair of law and ethics who was a devoted teacher and student advocate. For the MBA programs, this award is given to Professor Sartan Kabadai. For the specialized master's programs, the award is given to Professor John Fortunato. We are pleased to recognize their contribution with, with applause for all our faculty members. For more than 100 years, the Gabelli School of Business has been engaged in business education, preparing future global business leaders, entrepreneurs, and change makers. With joy and great pride, we will now celebrate the achievements of our Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Professional Studies candidates. They have advanced the Gabelli School's mission in research, teaching, and public service. We are counting on them to continue this important work after graduation, sharing their knowledge with others and taking on the challenges that we face as a society by utilizing business as a catalyst for change. As I call the name of each doctoral candidate, their field of study, and the name of their advisor, I ask that the student and advisor please stand and come forward. Dean Exoy will then hand each candidate a scroll and their advisor will then ceremoniously place the hood on the student. First degree candidate is Xianyun Chen. Area of work in FinTech will be hooded by Dr. Anyan.
Mengchuan Fu, area of uh, for study business finance, will be hooded by Dr. Iftikhar Hassan. Long Lee, area of study entrepreneurship, will be hooded by Dr. Ying Hong. Yang Liang Liao, Field of Study Strategy, will be hooded by Dr. Benjamin Cole. Chang Hui Pai, Area of Study Corporate Finance, will be hooded by Dr. Ying Hong. Ji Zhang, Area Study Business Economics, will be hooded by Dr. Sarah Wu. Ji Zhang, Area of Study Business Economics, will be hooded by Dr. Anyan. Ji Hua Zhang, Area of Study Health Economics, will be hooded by Dr. Sarah Wu. Ming Ming Zhu, Area Study Business Economics, will be hooded by Dr. Anyan.
This concludes the hooting of the Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Professional Studies students who are present at the ceremony. We would also like to congratulate six other Doctor of Professional Studies graduates who could not attend today's event. Geng Chen, Area of Study Strategy. Sheng Yi Chen, Area of Study Strategy. Hong Ji Gu, Area of Study Financial Economics. Xian Wei Wang, Area of Study Business Economics. Zhang Zheng Lu, Area of Study Business Economics and Wei Ye, Area of Study Business Economics. <laughs> On behalf of Fordham University's Gabelli School of Business, our congratulations to our doctoral graduates. Um, let's give them a round of applause one more time. <laughs> and now on to awarding our students the master's degree diplomas. Dr. Porso will lead this portion of the ceremony. This is what you've been waiting for, yes? We will now proceed with the time-honored tradition of presenting our master's degree students with a ceremonial diploma scroll, which will be presented by our treasured Dean Axoy, but we have a bonus for you. You will also be congratulated with a handshake from your program director. Graduates, your official degree, which be, will be conferred at the university commencement ceremony on Saturday, you will arrive in the mail during the summer, something to look forward to. Before we proceed with the presentations of the scroll, I would like to recognize our MBA and specialized master's students who are elected to honor societies, named to the dean's list, won special awards, and were recipients of the Responsible Business Leadership Certification. Could I ask you please to stand for recognition? Please stand. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for all your hard work and service. These students have been recognized at ceremonies uh, during the month. Now let us begin the awarding of diplomas. Members of our class of 2023, you have completed the requirements from a wide range of programs. Three MBA degrees and 11 Masters of Science degrees. We award diplomas by program, as each degree has its own unique curriculum and requirements. Four of our assistant deans from our graduate advising and engagement office will announce the names of our graduates. And it is my distinct pleasure to recognize Ilsa Fierson. Please stand. <laughs> Kathleen Kennan, please stand. Susan McGowan, please stand. And Christina Morales, please stand. And in addition, let us not forget Senior Assistant Dean for Graduate Advising Engagement, Lani Kusin. And they will all be assisting Dean Axoy in presenting the scrolls. So thank you. Program directors, as you hear your degrees called, be sure to rise and come to the center of the stage. Shake the hand of those students within your program. Those students who will be receiving their diploma from a family member who has graduated from this program before them will also receive congratulations from Dean Axoy and the program director. I'd like to ask all of you in the audience to please hold your applause until the last student receives a diploma scroll. So, I am heading back to my seat, and you're all going to take over. Thank you, 
I now call up the candidates for the Executive Master of Business Administration, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Francis Petit, Associate Dean and Program Director. Talanya Geary. Adriana Pizzulli. <laughs> Sophia Mari Gilks. <laughs> James Ballardi. <laughs> Maritza Graciela Rumplis. Celicia Hope Legister. Julian Body. Anastasio Perez. Nicolas Maresco. Mark Lofton Jr. Carlos Lopez Sanchez. Robert Otis Griffith. Carlos Galetti. Jonathan Echavaria. Suzanne McHale. Corey Burdick. Elena Dimova Stillman. Nadine Elocard. Robert Mayo. I now call up the candidates for the full-time Master of Business Administration, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Alex Markle, Program Director. No. The next Lauren Parisi McManus will be presented with her scroll by her brother, Joy Parisi, who, will, who graduated from Fordham College Rose Hill in 2016. No, the next one. Vikram Singh will be presented with his scroll by his wife, Mandara Rambaran, who graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 2022. <laughs> Jeffrey Smolens will be presented with his scroll by his mother, Donna Smolens, who graduated from Fordham College Rose Hill in 1979 and the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences in 1981. Agia Goel. <laughs> Catherine Boji. Diana Droughts. Sean Ayakurti. Tara Firestone. Travis Aiello. Shafrin Mustafa. Janida Kachi. Colin Greeny. Omar Davis.
Uday Singh. Seung Hwan Kim. Jing Hwan Mu. Matthew Gerald Brima. Jessica Folkar. Melissa Avotan, Yujun Jung, Karan Kumar, Sean Lee, Thomas Ree, Lucas Diversa, John Gentile. Nicholas Arbush. Sonia Danani. Pam Blitzova. Neil Daria. James Chadwick. Lizbeth Perez. Garima Mittal. Lydia Bailey Filosa. Taiba Kureishi. Subhanginmi Patel. Hamad Anahuyan. Adem Muratovich. Harsh Patel. Sakshi Tekrabal. Shubham Trivedi. Himanshu Yain. Nitin Chikara. Amit Matur. Michelle Shebline. Girish Sirmani. Saket Parik. Anjani Parik. Sidkant Tail. Cristiani Rodriguez Lima Sampaio. Natalia Alejandra Carrera. Ana Lucia Ubelos Fernandez. Josefina Paz Israel Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. 
Rene Miranda. Marcelo Chiarillo de Brito Pereira. Carlos Duque. Pedro Anglicantu. Felipe Shimizu. Michelle Cogallo. Sebastian Cáceres Sisa. Raghav Agarwal. Nicolas Alejandro Cosma Querini. Sammy Dibiani. Sai Shahank Reddy Kondakala. Leonard Mazon. Cesar Nicolas Feliciano. Miguel Pinto. Manish Matur. Jacqueline Mazarigo. Asmita Krishna. Rhea Manocha. Andrew Hodges. Temuz Koskun. Andrew Goldstick. Joshua Cohen. Saloni Kosla. Rebecca Wasserman. Sidhart Bohidar. Sidhant Rohan. Matthew Minenberg. Nicholas Valentino. Theo Kalogarakis. Connor McGuinness. Ananya Chakraborty. Nathan Hartman. Yening Zheng. Ying Chang. Thank you. Royang Bang. I now call up the candidates for the Professional Master of Business Administration, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Sertan Kabadai, Program Director. <laughs> Anthony Cardillo will be presented with his scroll by his brother. Nicholas Cardillo, who graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 2012. Christopher Calamari will be presented with his scroll by his father, Eugene Calamari, who graduated from the Graduate School of Education in 1995. Angelica Martinez will be presented with her scroll by her father, Roque Martinez, who graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 1992.
Canon Mitchell will be presented with his scroll by his father, James Mitchell, who graduated from the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences in 1997 and is currently an adjunct professor at the School of Professional and Continuing Studies. Alexa Payne will be presented with her scroll by her father, Charles Payne, who graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 1991. <laughs> Patrick Malanga. <laughs> Robert Joseph Strang III. <laughs> Juan Perdomo. Timothy Hoffman. Nicholas Vitale. Annabelle Hess. Haley Miner. Sadie Mendoza. Claudia Rivera, Casey Raymond, Joycelyn Swift, Naima Labike, Barbara Flynn. Molly DeCiso, Caitlin Wettlaufer, Adrian Stump, Martin Bukel, Erico Armani. Catherine Donlon, George Trimble, Kristen Connolly, Plinio Gonzalez, Connor Cunane. John Morrissey, James Cromie, Alexander Bustillo, Alexandra Finodeeva, Shari Oyefeso, Jenna Gambino. Jacob Zucker, Jimin's Cadet, Michelangelo Kimiluka, Richard Kelly, Christian Orsini, Patrick Murphy. Yaroslav Fencer, Tyler Marnolis, Jesse Schloss, Alejandro Strouch, Peter Cantor, Christopher Estebar. Camille Giacovas, Caitlin Schleimer, Wendy Rosas, Mary Ellen Sofiste, Angela Falco, K. 
Carol Moran. Carolyn Nunez Perez. Mathathia Kamla. Nguyen Ching Lee. Jessica Burbach. Monica Pestana. Carolyn Straub. Daniela Guerrero. Jennifer Sukraj. Christina Nguyen. Claire Delanoy. Alyssa Vitali. Amanda Schwartz. Caroline Demeter. Carissa Pasquale. Sandra Gillen. Juliana Pino. Laura Capasso. John Garfield. Gibran Charania. Barbara Di Tomasho. Christopher Agresti. Franklin DiBacci. Connor White. Brittany Schaffer. Taylor Palmer. Sydney Cantor. Catherine Ramsing. Maury Khan. Yan King. Thomas Donovan. I now call up the candidates for the Masters of Science degree in Accounting, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Stan Veliotis, Area Chair of Accounting and Taxation. Chase J. Krug. He will be handed his scroll by his grandfather, James Sullivan, who graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 1972. Juliana Cirillo will be presented with her scroll by her mother, Rosalie Cirillo, who graduated from the Fordham College Rose Hill in 1985. Leah Sherman. Sarah Ann Beals. Jessica Prinzo. Isabel Sullivan Hartman. Zoe Linda Lopez. Edward L. Schwartz, Jr. Mark Asper. Jacob N. Bloom. Mark Manuel Gadaleta. Connor J. McNeil. Bryn K. Toombs. Jamie K. Francisco. Brittany Chong. 
Catherine Mary Ruderka. Hyung Jun Su. Alexander Cameron Nord. Ka Ling Cheng. Kai Hu Shu. Bijuan Li. Si Yang Wang. Lu Ying Chen. Yulin Meng. Yong Liang Zhou. Hoi Chao Chung. Lingda K. Landry. Ying King King Hu. Ting Zhu. Verinda Aurora. William O'Donovan, the third. Arnav Naik. Bumi Zaveri. Rexy James. Sharing Lama. Sungjin An. Ian Joyce Gozum Sanchez. Shannon Green. Daniel Borges Correa. Sebastian Fink. Mukwim Farouk Mirza. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Applied Statistics and Decision Making, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Exoy and congratulated by Dean Dr. Yoon Hee Kim, Area Chair of Strategy and Statistics. Chi okay. Wong. Zi Shang, Merlin Castillo, Samantha Marucci, C. E. Lee, I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Business Analytics, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Ilu Zhou. Okay. Tanuja Dishmuk. <laughs> Asmita Deepak Tumani. Lillian Ling. Adisa Fertovic. Jane Cheong. Belman Rama. Ruthie Mudunuri. Go, 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 go. 
Sejal Panchal. Jada Muwan Dapa. Siddharth Nima. <laughs> Sinduri Ayer. Saif Sarwar. Ambar Rajiv Padarandam. Tanish Jayant Thorat. Vandana Argawal. Arpeta Chowdhury. Boris Bature. Vaiviv Raghav. Hui Yi Huang. Hong Zhou. Tian Hao Wong. Zhou Yuan Li. Yi Yang Liu. Xiang Li Su. Ying Ning Sun. Raushuan Chao. Miao Shi Li. Jennifer Kate McFadden. Iwana Protopapadaki. Nada Rachid. <laughs> Claudia Villanueva Robles. <laughs> Betsy Mendiata Brito. <laughs> Alberto Divia. Wei Xuan Li. Li Chong Lin. Yi Gu Guo. Jeremy Montoya. Shira Puray. Si Chong Tong. Tong Xiang. Aisha Lee. Sophia Roberti. Dayani Yusida Guevara. Shayna Nicole Liu. Natani Drati. Carolyn Monahan. I'm a bong unday. Nyseri Vaughn. Patrick Wolf. Peter Warzestra. Joseph Bocan. Maeve Elizabeth Riley. Zyra Ceballos Ordonez. Alina Naim. Cody Verschrank Aital. 
Paulina Gorshenkova. Ipsita Mula. Giovanni Dahia. Donning Wong. Christina Chu. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Finance, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Yu Wu Shu, Program Director. Jacob Rothstein. Ji Hong Yu. Melissa King. Sandesh Negdav. Christopher Connolly. Simon L. Javoy. Tiffen Lagang. Berenice Dediesbach de Belleroche. Michael Aguilus. Morgan M. Roy. Luciana Cruz Zapata. Lulua Taki. Zaina Taki. Aikaterini Melisurgos. Marina Borsak. Han Shu. Joseph Peter Sorisi. Lauren Michelle Gracia. Gregory Di Francia. Liam Doherty. Satram Sarabdial. Gorov Adikari. Charlim Pagan Razor. Benjamin Amakie Asiedu. Johannes R. Pascual. Christopher Medina. Junjie Jia. Juliano S. Sanchez. Marsha Simpson. Lucia Sebatu Mangaya Lahai. Caitlin Downey. Brandon T. Golden. Catherine Bolisano. Yiming Guan. Edward Di Donato. Gabrielle Vestrini. Shishun Liu. Daniel Delaney. Gregory Salwen. Michael William Johnston, Jr. 
Andrew R. Ramsamy. Daniel Richard Gigon. Maya Ariel Fontaine. Sianja Sanchez Rivera. Yahida Aldas Andrade. Anir Incapié Vieira. Josh Jadeep Dedia. Ayush Kavar. Arif Kazi. Kuntu Shah. Smith Harishbai Tejani. Naomi S. Marfatia. Aditya Jiten Sapani. Harshal Patidar. Sarah Hillary Diaz. Umang Vinod Gandhi. Sharika Devnani. Berav Manawat. Nishant Keswani. Adit Gandhi. Antonio Nicolo Cernia. Ana Viola. Shivam Bapna. Udant Gupta. Rishi Lu. Juhi Paranjape. Risham Solanki. Vebab Kokchar. Shashank Sorav. Tanvi Daidia. Avani Derashri. Sadman Sakib. Alicia Suarez. Yumna Rashid. Sofia Alejandra Chavez Gomez. Roleida Melo. Maria Ignacia Gibson. Natalie Sanchez. Dominic Pavul. Wei Hong Chen. Jin Hao Liang. Ningji Jiang. Samuel Holland Kerasi. Joseph Pisano. Jakob Gizin. Brendan Mott. Quinn Fender. Martina Palma Angela Vertemati. Ana Laura Metallo. Natasha Okrim. 
Roberta Laudato. Simone Perego. Federico Turchi. Pietro Cortinovis. Christian Yonai. Yushan Lei. Xinyu Liu. Yunfei Yue. Gerardo Cercielo. Humberto Spoletini. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Information Technology, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Ji Ren, Program Director. Jason Matthew. Akash Tapa. Ashrif Tukler. Jiali Wong. Carissa Aseri. Abdulaziz Al Qurashi. Jin Di Jong. Yu Jin Song. I now call up the candidates for the Masters of Science degree in Management, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Dongli Zhang. Lauren Nurse Campbell will be presented with her scroll by her father, Mark Nurse, who graduated from the Gabelli School of Business in 2001. Lauren Layfield. Clara Diaz. Debbie M. Cruz. Justin William Smalley. Anisha Amin. Abigail Walker. Olivia Nunez. <laughs> Alexandra E. Levy. <laughs> Celine Gonzalez. <laughs> Marina Rivera. <laughs> Sai Shraya Bayana. <laughs> Suhani. Patel, Grant Alexander Jackson, Christos Economides, Dawit Y. Kathlemariam, Andrew George Agriatonis. Grace Murray. Jingbo Zhang. Yuan Li. Hao Dong Li. Shidian Yang Chen. Hao 
Ji Jong. Alfred Zhao. Xiao Chi Xu. Pei Shan Yu. Zhuan Ting Wang. Xin Xin Li. Julia Spena. Shui Yu. Nefertari Solibari. Ashley Kong. Stephen Signore. Abdul Kamal Ahalero. Juan S. Benegra. Elizabeth Maravel Moreno. Douglas Rojas Salinas. Melissa Peters Chapman. Mary Ann Sudeco. Priyanka Pagu. Agatha Nicole Fahut Parmalino. Lena Akalali. Madison P. Russo. Amreen Tahir. Sanjeva R. Arahula. Ada Osvanillo. Zuhang Tong. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science in Marketing Intelligence. They will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Peter Johnson, Program Director. Ksenia Alexeva. Julia McAleer. Marielle Rivera, Dayara Martins, Reem El Sarari, Lindsay Hung, Alexis Hong Dominguez, Shafali Gupta. Vedant Podar, Avani Sarana, Dewani Doshi, Sanjana Vangani, Simran Karbaga. Siddharth Bhuptani, Maria Lisinski, Ishuan Li, Un Jin Jung, Yi Lei Wong, Shi Chiao Yin. 
Juan Pineda. Chi Ching Du. Chen Yuan Li. Liao Jin Fong. Yu Chi Teng. Shin Sun Wong. Yu Zhang Wei. Yu Ju Seng. Rui Xia. Chi Fei Chan. Yashin Dong. Aileen Wong. Jiehua Huang. Jun Feng Zheng. Masahi Kwanazawa. Kevin Leo. Samuel Ogden. Derek Bogosian. Daniela Keim. Anna Lionardo de la Morale. Rihanna Bakker. Mahita Biram. Adriano Policicchio. Bear Rose Lindsay Beltran. Santiago Oblaza. Hong Shu So. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science in Media Management who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Bojena Merzaska, Program Director. Taylor Villotis will be presented with her scroll by her father, Dr. Stan Villotis, who graduated from Fordham Law School in 1989 and is currently an associate professor and the Area Chair of Accounting and Taxation at the Gabelli School of Business. <laughs> Maria Corina Wallace will be presented with her scroll by her sister, Fabiana Wallace, who graduated from Fordham Law School in 2018. <laughs> Trey Sneed. Joshua Samuel Colon Navarro. Hannah Karen. Vedit John. Michael Yodice. Adele Tumu. Raquel Christiana Arabalo. <laughs> Woheb Kwawaja. Ryan Garcia. <laughs> Millie Hafferty. <laughs> Carlotta Casasampera Skoda. <laughs> Valeria Demanova. Jarell Canty, Jorge Martinez, Chloe Katoya, Rebecca Myers, Caitlin Hughes, Alexia Nicolo, Mahir Elskov. Milica Jodic, Julia Pinto, Mahir Gupta, 
Emily Reagan Loder, Vashvi Sanjay Mystery, Valentina Fersino, Joshna Levashetti. Duyuti Pramod. Ru Ying Huang. <laughs> Ziyuan Hong. Yifan Hao. Xin Wei Zhou. Bilisi Tuve. Megan Jonathan. Sarah Carpell. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Quantitative Finance, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Anyan, Area Chair. Ashton Danielle Kim. Shreyas Kalkar. Christopher Robinson II. Tianming Ma. Chinan Wang. Letian Liang. Kaida He. Jingyong Chang. Yu Chang, Haonan Yin, I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Strategic Marketing and Communications, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dr. Timothy Malafite. Kayla Mejia. Kayla. Brittany Nicole Winters Gullo. Caitlin Gaffney. Annika Moimita. Eleni Sorellis. Allison May Randall. Lita Alakani. Janine Guzman. Jennifer Lynn Solomon. Lydia Rebecca. Valatoro Yoder. Alexandra R. Peck. Amanda J. Herpet. Shelby A. Van Sickle. Alexandra Grujan. Leticia R. Clay. Eliza Saunders. Victoria Carter. Alexa. Trishon Presto Aquino. Susan M. Twomba. Florida Lise Polanco. Angeli Gabriella Duran Tirado. Kayla Somar. 
Modupe Ugunlaja. Sarandal Henry. Aaron E. Denise. I now call up the candidates for the Master of Science degree in Taxation, who will be presented with their scrolls by Dean Axoy and congratulated by Dr. Stan Beliotis, Area Chair. Nicholas Dater. Michael Legan. Donald Chan. Min Young. Courtney Caitlin Vita. Lucille Sophia Richter. Joseph Maculliano. Dwayne Montague. Amy Liu. Katya J. Jimenez. Vivian Guan. Congratulations to the class of 2023. What an inspirational group who I know will do us proud. Our ceremony is almost complete, but before we begin the recessional, I would like to ask Father John Cicero of the Society of Jesus to come forward to give the benediction. Well, congratulations, and we made it to the end of the ceremony. For whomever's remaining, a few words to Almighty God. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day, for the blessings you have bestowed on us. We ask your continued guidance and inspiration for our recent graduates and your blessing upon all of us at our beloved university. And we ask this, as always, in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father. That concludes our graduation event today. We hope you join us for a champagne toast in honor of our graduates that will take place on the path behind the lawn immediately following this event, which is another way of saying now. Congratulations to all the graduates. We wish you good health and nothing but the best in all your future endeavors. Congratulations.